Hello dear students and welcome to another video lesson in the series of lessons on great achievements. This lesson is primarily intended for the third grade secondary school students, but it doesn't mean other students interested in great historic events can't enjoy it too. Today we'll talk about a small step which undoubtedly changed the world. My name is Anita, join me in today's lesson about moon landing. U današnjoj lekciji slušat ćemo tekst o prvoj uspješnoj misiji slijetanja na mjesec i analizirat ćemo tekst pri slušanju. For this lesson you'll need just regular stuff, your notebook or a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, and your smartphone or laptop, a personal computer connected to the internet. Before we start the lesson, I have to say I really enjoyed preparing it and I hope you'll have fun. People have always been curious and have always desperately wanted to visit the most inaccessible places in the world. Then once they had no more territory to explore, they began inventing ways to leave Earth first on wings and later on rockets until finally they touched the face of the moon. A celestial body of mystery and magic, so near yet so far away. How much do you know about crucial events which preceded the actual moon landing? Let's see. Of course, it didn't happen just like that, so someone snapped their fingers and here we go, we have people walking on the moon. Going to the moon wasn't easy and there was a lot of hard work, drama, surprise, even tragic events before a human being set foot on the lunar surface. So first, I'd like to discuss some major events that led to it. Here you can see a timeline with four photos. There is a name or a term below each photo, and your task is to pause the video and take a moment to think about the names or terms you see and the way they are connected to the moon landing. Cold War, Space Race, John Fitzgerald Kennedy and the Polo One. Before you start making predictions about the way they are connected to the first successful manned mission to the moon, here are some words that will certainly help you do the task. Decade, capitalist, fire, communist, dominance, first, ambitious, competition, satellite, go, Superiority, crew. These are my notes. What about yours? Are they similar to mine? Let's see. Cold War was a decades-long struggle for world dominance between the capitalist United States and the communist Soviet Union, which brought the world to the brink of nuclear disaster. Space was another important battlefield for the Cold War and even led to the creation of NASA. Space Race is the competition between the USI and the Soviet Union for supremacy in space exploration. It started when the Soviets launched the first man-made object into the Earth orbit, the satellite Sputnik. A month later, Sputnik 2 was launched carrying a stray dog named Laika. People in the USA, used to their country's technological superiority, were shocked. In 1961, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy committed the nation to the ambitious goal of landing a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Kennedy boldly declared, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And finally, Apollo 1. The mission was to be the first crewed flight of Apollo, but it ended tragically. Three member crew died as a result of a fire which swept through the command module during a pre flight test. But how much do you actually know about the first successful mission to the moon? I bet you like quizzes too. Everybody loves them, as long as they are dynamic, of course. 
So I've created one that we are going to take together now. It's a short 10 question quiz. Each question features four possible answers. I'll read a question and you have five seconds to take your pick. Ready? Here is the first question. So the first question is, what does the acronym NASA stand for? A, North America Airline Agency. B, National Airliner and Space Adventures. C, National Air and Space Agency. Or D, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The correct answer is D, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The second question is, when did the first moonwalk take place? A. In 1989, B. In 1958, C. In 1969, or D. In 1976? The correct answer is C. In 1969. Question number three. What was the name of the space shuttle that first landed humans on the moon? A. Apollo 11, B. Apollo 13, C. Enterprise 11, or D. Interstellar? The correct answer is A. Apollo 11. Question number four. How many crew members were on Apollo 11? A. One, B. Two, C3 or D4? The correct answer is C. There were three crew members. Question number five. Which of the astronauts didn't take part in Apollo 11's historic flight? A. Neil Armstrong, B. Michael Collins, C. Jim Lovell, or D. Buzz Aldrin? The correct answer is Jim Lovell. Question number six. Who was the first man to set foot on the moon? A. Neil Armstrong, B. Michael Collins, C. Jim Lovell, or D. Buzz Aldrin? We already know that Jim Lovell isn't the correct answer. So it's A. Neil Armstrong. Question number seven. What did Neil Armstrong say when he first set foot on the moon? A. This is one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. B. This is one small step for a man, a big one for mankind. C. I can't believe we are here. Or D. How shall we go back? The correct answer is A. This is one small step for a man. One giant leap for mankind. Question number eight. How long was Neil Armstrong's moonwalk? A. Four hours. B. 36 minutes. C. Three minutes and six seconds. Or D. Two hours and 36 minutes. The correct answer is... D, two hours and 36 minutes. The ninth question, who was the US president at the time? A, Ronald Reagan, B, Richard Nixon, C, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, or D, Lyndon Johnson? The correct answer is Richard Nixon. Question number 10. What didn't the astronauts leave on the moon? A. An American flag. B. A plaque. C. A camera. Or D. Their footprints. The correct answer is C. A camera. If you got them all correct, congratulations. If you didn't, don't be too disappointed. Now you listen to a text about the mission and you'll have a chance to find out everything you have ever wanted to know about Apollo 11. From the moment Mission Control began the countdown to splash down in the Pacific Ocean. Before you start listening to the text, please 
copy this table into your notebooks. Your task is to choose a name from the list and match it with what it refers to. Columbia, Sea of Tranquility, Houston, Eagle, Cape Kennedy, Roger, Saturn V, and Apollo 11. Lunar Landing Site, Launch Site, Mission Control Center, Message Received, Spacecraft, Rocket, Lunar Module, Command Module. Now listen to the text. At 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, on July 16, 1969, with about 650 million people watching live worldwide, Mission Control commenced Apollo 11's launch countdown. Eight years after President Kennedy announced the ambitious goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth, Apollo 11 took off from Cape Kennedy with astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. To overcome the Earth's orbital gravity, NASA required an unimaginably powerful rocket, so the Apollo spacecraft was launched on top of the Saturn V. The Saturn V was made of three stages. The first two stages used up their fuel reaching orbit. After one and a half orbits of the Earth, the third stage of the Saturn V refired to send Apollo on its outward journey to the Moon. Shortly afterwards, the command module separated from the Saturn third stage, turned around and connected nose to nose with the lunar module which had been stored in the third stage. With Eagle attached to its nose, Columbia drew away from the third stage which was used to push the Apollo command module and lunar module to the moon. During the spacecraft's second pass around the moon, the two modules separated from each other. Michael Collins stayed in the command module in orbit around the moon and the two astronauts in the lunar module piloted it for two hours towards the lunar surface. At the last minute, Mission Control announced only 30 seconds of fuel left in the reserves. The warning alarms blared, but Armstrong, cool and collected, took over manual control and manoeuvred the spacecraft. On July 20th, at 4.15pm, the lunar module was brought to a gentle rest at the Sea of Tranquility. The Eagle has landed, Armstrong reported to a white knuckled mission control. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Head. Head. Contact right. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. As commander, Armstrong had the privilege of being the first astronaut to set foot on the moon. He opened the hatch, and as he stepped off the ladder onto the lunar, powdery surface, Armstrong spoke his famous quote, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Aldrin joined him on the moon's surface 19 minutes later. They took photographs of the terrain, planted a US flag, ran a few simple scientific tests, and spoke with President Richard Nixon via Houston. The prospect of Armstrong and Aldrin being stranded on the moon was real enough that the President's office had a condolence speech prepared, which began, Fate has ordained the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. Man's first dramatic venture on the lunar surface ended at 1.54pm July 21st. 
Among the items left on the surface of the moon was a plaque that read, Here are men from the planet Earth, set foot on the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin lifted off from the moon on a tower of flame. They rejoined Eagle to Columbia, in which Collins had waited for them in lunar orbit. They returned to Columbia and cast Eagle adrift. The Apollo 11 mission concluded exactly 8 days, 3 hours, 18 minutes and 35 seconds after launch, with a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean. And here is the answer key. <laughs> Message received. Cape Canton. <laughs> Site. Houston. <laughs> Mission Control Center. <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> Lunar Module. <laughs> Apollo 11 spacecraft. <laughs> Saturn V rocket. Columbia Command Module, Sea of Tranquility, Lunar Landings. Let's go on. I have another task for you. In the following listening comprehension task, you have to fill in the gaps with the missing words. All the words you have to use are from the text you have just listened to. Use only one word per gap. Read the text carefully and take some time to do this task. You can pause the video now. And let's check your answers now. On July the 16th, 1969, Mission Control commenced Apollo 11's launch countdown and the powerful Saturn V took off from Cape Kennedy. It was an unimaginably powerful rocket made of three stages. On July the 20th, the lunar module called the Eagle began its descent to the lunar powdery surface. At the last minute, the warning alarms blared, but Armstrong remained collected and brought the Eagle to a gentle rest. The Eagle has landed, he reported to a white knuckled mission control. He opened the hatch and made history. We are not done with the tasks yet, but there is just one more to go. In this task, you have to match these six words with their synonyms. Blair, collected, white knuckled, hatch, take off and commence. Here is the answer key. Blair, blast, collected, calm, it's an adjective, white knuckled, jittery, hatch, door, take off, lift off, and commence, start. Great. We've come to the end of today's lesson. There is just one more activity to go before we finish it. Neil Armstrong didn't like giving interviews. He didn't think of himself as a superhero. In a rare public speech in 2000, he said, I am and ever will be a White Sox pocket protector nerd engineer. Unfortunately, Neil Armstrong died in 2012, aged 82. But just for a moment, imagine you could go back in time and imagine you were given the privilege to meet Neil Armstrong and ask him about two things from the lesson you didn't quite understand. What would you ask him? Now, think of one thing you would tell him. What would it be? We are done for today. If you want to find out how a pen saved a mission to the moon from ending in disaster, join me in the next video lesson. Bye.